Welcome to the interview with Russell Earl McGowan, part six. And we're la left off uh, with the birth of your daughter, Julie. Yeah, Julie was my third uh, child. So now I have a family of three to feed. And uh, so uh, I, d uh, but when her mother was uh, going to give birth to her, we went to Sentinel Hospital. And on the way down on Sepulveda, there wasn't any freeway at that time. It was just a two-lane road up over Mulholland uh, and the tunnel up there to go down. And we were going up around that winding road on Sepulveda in my Buick. No, I didn't have a Buick either. I had a Plymouth, 49 Plymouth uh, Coupe. And she and I were in it and uh, with Julie. And, uh, well, she wasn't born yet. And anyway, we were going up there and a huge truck came down, one that carries uh, cars, and it had big iron uh, skids on it. And one of them comes swinging over across our lane of traffic and hit, a, hit our windshield and broke the windshield and bent both posts each side and we ducked down and it was one that didn't cut our heads off, but we didn't hurt us a bit. We were very lucky and I managed to get off to the side. The truck was going so fast. he went quite a ways and I had to go down to talk to the driver about his insurance and stuff. But anyway, to make a long story shorter, why uh, uh, we were sitting over the road and behind us was a car with two recruiting officers, army uniforms on. And I asked them, I said, would you be kind enough to take my wife down to Sentinel Hospital in Culver City? She's uh, having a baby and she's in uh, childbirth. Oh no, we're glad to. So they did, they took her off. And I walked on down, found the truck driver, and uh, did uh, what was required there. And uh, then after that, why after Julie was born, why uh, uh, I went uh, looking for a job. So I went to the employment office, and and uh, they've had a job open in the San Fernando Veterans Hospital for an electrician. I had applied for an electrician job, and I was a journeyman because I had worked in Ogden, Utah on buses and I, at that time I got a journeyman card. So I told him I was a journeyman and uh, they hired me. And my job when I went there was a brand new building that held about 300 men. It uh, wasn't occupied yet but uh, at each uh, bedside they had a pull cord and a little metal box with a, a switch in it with three radio channels and a headphone jack. And the patient, he could plug his headphones, lay in bed, plug his headphones into that jack and listen to three uh, radio stations. Actually, it was two radio stations and one station they had there that they put on programs. So anyway, the contractor that had built the building didn't know the, the proper way to hook up a three-channel radio and there was crosstalk between the channels. You couldn't understand any of them. They were just uh, terrible. So they asked me if I could correct that and I said yes. So that was my first job. So uh, they assigned Lewis who was a helper, had been at the hospital about two years and he was about my age. Uh, I was in my 20s and he was too and he was a little bit jealous because I was a getting more money than him being a, 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 a senior electrician and he was just a helper. So uh, he screwed me up. In other words, he wouldn't do what I asked him to do. He, he uh, kept the crosstalk in there and I couldn't get rid of it and after a week, why I wasn't any better off than when I started. So I went to the um, officer there that was in charge of uh, that maintenance and I asked him for another man. And he said, who do you want? And I said, I'd like to have that gardener. I had been looking out the window and I saw a gardener that worked real hard. He was a Mexican man, about 55. I'd like to have him. He said, okay. So I went down and told him he was going to be assigned to work with me. So what I did, I went down to the basement of the building and I disconnected all three circuits where they came in. And then I uh, put a 1,000 cycle tone on one pair of wires that fed the building and I left a radio station on the other one and I left the other pair blank. Now we had, uh, and then as we went up to the first room and uh, listened with a pair of headphones, we heard a, 
a 1000 cycle tone, I said put that on terminal 1 and 2 on the switch. Uh, where you hear no signal at all, the blank channel, put that on 3 and 4. On the radio, when you hear a radio program, put that on 5 and 6. That's what I told this carter. And he did that. And as a consequence, in a week's time, everything was going real smooth. And when we got the building done, it worked perfectly. They were real clean and nice. And I went down and took the signal generators off and uh, put it onto the other t uh, line, and we were in business. So they appreciated that and thought I had the ability. So I stayed there working as an electrician, and I got a wealth of experience. I worked on nurses' call systems. I worked on uh, lighting, on uh, outlets, on uh, tumbler dryers. Uh, up on a water tank, they had a, a descaling device we put in to keep uh, rust off the sides inside. I went up and I did all that. I climbed poles. I disconnected 3,800 volt electrical, and uh, it was a good job. And Frank, my boss, he was an older man. I was in my 20s, but he was about 55, so I always consider him older <laughs> and older. But he liked me. He, he and I got along beautifully, and I really did like Frank. And so I worked there, oh, I guess about a year, and then they wanted to have a radio, uh, amateur radio station there so the patients could talk to people, all their relatives in all the states of the Union and even in Guam. And we worked. We did. We talked to Guam and all over the world, actually, with that radio station. Uh, the LA Times donated a thousand dollars toward the station, and uh, they I bought a Collins 32A uh, transmitter and a 75A receiver, which was the latest equipment, and I put them in the ham station and used my license. I had an amateur radio license, and uh, they allowed me two hours a day to go up there and uh, do that. So that was real nice duty, and I built the towers big poles and put them up on top of the building, painted them red and white. They were made out of wood about 20 feet high with the wires on them. And uh, that was good duty. Well, then uh, I was going down uh, on my time off, uh, down Sepulveda Boulevard, actually, and uh, I had an accident with a bus. A bus didn't give a signal, and uh, I ran into it because he didn't give me a signal he was turning. And it was a bad accident. The man with me, I picked up a hitchhiker, and he got hurt pretty bad. And I was hurt too. My shoulder was crushed. And I went over and sat on a curb. And uh, it ended up that they took me by ambulance to uh, General Hospital. And uh, there, the doctors told me, well, you'll probably never use that arm again. Uh, that ball of your uh, shoulder's crushed. There's no ball there. So they put it in some kind of a sling, and it was heavy, and uh, I sat up nice, and it, it hurt. And uh, I put a hook up in the ceiling of our house, because we had a wood ceiling there in New Hall in that old house. And uh, I put a rope on it and brought it down and put it around my arm and held the weight off of it, and it didn't hurt so bad. And the family was all asleep, and I was awake all night cussing. I just sat out there, and I hate to say it, but I just kept self-wearing to myself. And uh, anyway, uh, then, but I still went back to work each day, and uh, they were going to put me on sedimentary duty, which I guess is light duty. And I said, no, I'd rather just do my regular job. So I was reaching up, putting in bushings, and, and doing things with that arm, trying to get it up there, and boxes to put in the electrical wire. And uh, as a consequence, the darn shoulder began to give me some motion. And I went back to the hospital, and they x-rayed it and the doctor said, I can't believe it. He says, it, and, it, and about 12 doctors were in that room looking at those x-rays. They couldn't believe that that arm and uh, ball had begun to form again, and it did. And now it's, it's fine. I, I, it, it, I don't know how, but it got better. Now it's perfectly all right. It doesn't bother me at all. And I was real happy about that. But uh, while I was uh, there at the uh, VA hospital, they hired another electrician because uh, they had this hall in this new building with 200 new patients. They needed more help. And they hired a man from uh, Milwaukee, he was an older man. He was a journeyman electrician, too. And uh, Frank, and he uh, had a two, well, a dual wheel Chevrolet 39 truck that he brought his stuff out. 
in from Milwaukee and he wanted to sell it. So he sold it to me for $350.